All right, I want to talk about section 9.6. It's called Properties of Rational Numbers versus Irrational Numbers. And we're going to kind of sort them and talk about the two different styles of numbers. First, both of these numbers come from the real number system. But within the real numbers, we have kind of two large sections. And the first side we have is our rational numbers. The second side is the irrational. Almost all the numbers that we've been talking about thus far and thus far in your entire mathematics career fit into the rational numbers. So this would be most numbers we know. These would be numbers like whole numbers, fractions, and um, most numbers that we can write out, and even some repeating decimals, or actually all repeating decimals. For example, they could be numbers like 3, like 7, like uh, 13 fifths, like 6 squared. All of these are real numbers. Sorry, they are rational numbers. However, when we start to get some kinds of long decimals, if there's a pattern, they're still rational numbers. So long with a pattern. For example, the number 0.333 repeating is a rational number because I can write this as one third and that makes it a rational number and it has a pattern with it. Now, I can also write this number as 0.333 with my ellipses after it. That just means it goes on forever. And I can see that there's already a pattern established. So I know that these threes are going to continue onward. And this would fit in with my rational numbers because I can see that it has a pattern with a pattern. It's very important and very key. Even the decimal number this, 0.181818 repeating or I can write it as 0.1818 ellipses after I've established that there's a pattern is a rational number. However, we have our, our irrational numbers and before we really only knew one irrational number in our whole set of numbers and this is the number pi. And the number pi is different than the rational numbers because it goes on forever. with no pattern. We have found pi to billions and billions of decimal places and there's still no pattern to be found inside of it. And these are the set of irrational numbers. Before we only have this number pi, but we will start to get some new irrational numbers now that we can do square roots. For example, if I look at the number, the square root of seven. If I put this into a calculator, I'll get something like 2.6457513111. And I can say that this does go on forever. However, there's no pattern that's been established. So it, it just goes on forever randomly. So the square root of 7 is an irrational number. And in fact, any square root that isn't a perfect square is irrational. And this is kind of key to our understanding of these two numbers. In this section, all you're going to be doing is sorting some numbers. For example, let's take a look at some examples. Let me find my little orange marker. Example one. If we take a look at the number square root of 50, irrational or rational? Well, it's a square root. Is 50 a perfect square? 
No, not a perfect square. So, irrational. Remember my perfect squares are those numbers, the, that chart we built last time of like, you know, uh, 36, 49, 64, 64. All the numbers that are squared by something. Take a look at another example. Let's take a look at 8.7 squared. Well, this means 8.7 times 8.7. That's kind of confusing looking. And our answer here is, if I put this into my calculator, I can see that it is 75.69. Well, it is not a repeating decimal, so it is definitely a rational. Or a rat, I guess. One more. Let's take a look at the square root of 414. Well, is this a perfect square? I'm not sure. I can plug this into my calculator and I can test that it is not a perfect square. So it is irrational. There you go. Not too bad. And uh, good luck with this section.